So while some people have a sheet of paper out because they are ready to go ahead and get started, um, what we're going to do is cover the sine graph. Now, last class period, guys, we spent a large amount of time actually graphing the sine graph. And we kind of chose all the points. But in reality, you know, we don't need to memorize that initial period or all the points in the graph. Because basically, we can identify the sine graph just by using knowing these coordinate points. Um, that's 1, 0. That's 0, 1. Negative 1, 0. And then this point is going to be 0, comma, negative 1. Right? Now again, our basic angles here is 0, right? Pi halves. Pi. 3 pi halves. And 2 pi all evenly spaced out from one another. Now men, remember when we have a coordinate point on the unit circle, sine represents the y coordinate. So at 0, we're at coordinate point 0. But then once we get to pi halves, the y coordinate goes up to 1. Then we go down here, then we went to here, and then we go to there. And then since we spent all last class period doing sine, we can remind ourselves, oh yeah, the sine graph looks something like that. Agreed? But when you guys were first learning this, I did not expect you to come to that conclusion. So what I did is I said, you know what? Let's practice finding more points. Pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. So I'm not going to write the x coordinate. Actually, I will. So, um, so what we did, or what you guys had to do, um, was we did all of the points, all the points between 0 and 2 pi. And when we did that, we ended up getting, like, here's 1 half. So the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, right? Then we got square root of 2 over 2, which I just kind of told you guys was like right here. Then square root of 3 over 2, which ended up being like right there, roughly. OK? Now, what I'd like us to do is I could do this exact same lesson. I actually have done the exact same lesson for all the reciprocal functions. But I think for the sake of time, I think you guys would probably agree, you only really need to do this for only a couple of them to really get the understanding that we need. So what I'm going to ask you guys to do is rather than find the sine of your angle, let's go ahead and find the cosecant of the angle. So I'd like you guys to figure out the cosecant of 0, the cosecant of pi over 6, the cosecant of pi over 4, the cosecant of pi over 3, cosecant of pi halves, and then the cosecant of, I don't know, let's just add one more angle here. Let's do pi. OK? Now again, remember, the sine of an angle on, for a point on the inner circle is the y coordinates. Yes? So then the cosecant is, per your definition from our unit circle day, is 1 over y. Right? Yeah. OK. So you have all the y coordinates for all the points. You just need to now kind of figure some of those out. Um, all right, I'm leaving myself some space here. Very good. OK. So I'm just going to kind of get started. Hopefully, you guys at least got some of these. Um, so cosecant of 0 is obviously the y coordinate, which is 0. But 1 over 0, which is the reciprocal, right? Again, guys. Cosecant of theta is 1 over y. That's for a point on the unit circle, though. Agreed? Yeah. That's the only one we have. The only one we're talking about point on the unit circle. Many of you made that mistake on your quiz, which I will pass out later today. So it's just 1 over 0. Well, obviously, 1 over 0 is undefined. Right? We'll get to the graphing portion in a second. What about pi over 6? 1 over 1 half. Now, again, this kind of goes to our understanding. If sine of theta is, one, uh, is y and cosecant is 1 over y, right? They're reciprocals of each other. But we did something easier here. We also talked about these in terms of, what about this? Cosecant of some angle for a triangle was hypotenuse over opposite. And sine of theta was opposite over hypotenuse. Do you remember those re relationships? That was when we had a right triangle. Right? We don't need to create a right triangle when we have the unit circle. It's a little bit easier to do a coordinate than to actually draw a triangle. Yes? But the point of me bringing this up is why try to simplify 1 over 1 half? Can't we just flip the fraction and just say this is 2 over 1, which is just 2? 
Like, isn't that so much easier just to flip the fraction instead of doing it 1 over y? So yeah, there's nothing wrong with this definition. It's correct. But a lot of times, it's just easier to think of it as the reciprocal. right? It's just the flipped version of it. And that's definitely a case here. 1 over 2, square root of 2, if you were going to simplify this, you would just multiply by the reciprocal on the top and the bottom. And what do you know? You get square root of 2. I'm sorry, you get, oh, did I flip it the other way? Jeez. You have square root of 2 over 2. That's 1 over y. Multiply by the reciprocal to get rid of the fraction. And what do you get? You just get the flipped version of the answer anyways. So my point is, just go and have a seat over there for you to one. So my point is that for you guys just to go ahead and flip it from the onset. Now again, 2 over square root of 2, what do you need to do with this? on the top and the bottom, which is called the process of rationalizing the denominator. And hopefully, if you've done the problems in this class up to this point, you would already know that the answer is? 2 square root of 2 over 2. Right, which is just square root of 2. Yes. Right? I've done a lot of these problems with the special right triangles. So hopefully, you guys kind of follow my work. But again, if you're not, I guess I'll just show my work. 2 square root of 2 over 2. There. That's all I got it. Um, and then we have square root of pi over 3, which again, if we just do the flip version here, that's going to be 2 square root of 3. I'm sorry. That's going to be 2 over the square root of 3, which gives you 2 radical 3 over 3. If we look at pi halves, this is interesting. Sine is y. Cosecant is 1 over, or sine is, the y, is 1, right? Sorry. Sine is 1. Cosecant is 1 over 1, which is also. They share the same point. The cosecant is equal to the sine. Yeah? That's not true for any other one up here. And then the cosecant of pi, again, y coordinate is 0, so that's going to be 1 over 0, which is undefined. So just imagine if I gave you guys those cards again, and I gave you all the values in the unit circle. Right? The same thing is going to happen. Like you would evaluate them, but again, what would happen? these answers would just end up repeating, right? Because doesn't the first quadrant just repeat for different positive and negative values, right? So we really don't need to do it all over again. We just need to figure out the first quadrant, right? And then I added pi as an extra angle. So let's go and graph these. Well, when something's undefined, it's either, so far in this class, it's either been a hole or an asymptote. So what do you think that's going to represent in this case? Well, a hole will be removable, meaning it's going to be divided out. So let's use an asymptote. And again, the asymptote is an undefined value that the graph approaches, right? So this new graph we're going to draw needs to approach that asymptote. At pi over 6, it was 1 half. Now that got flipped to 2. So let's put 2 up here. Um, and then if you, were to in, if you were to simplify this, you know, the square root of 1, guys, is 1. The square root of 2, it, or square root of 4, is 2. So this is roughly going to be somewhere between 1 and 2, but probably a closer to 1. Agreed? Maybe like 1.3 or something. I don't know. So kind of do that right there. And then this one, if you actually were to plug this into your calculator, I actually don't know the decimal version, but I bet it's going to be somewhere into closer to there. Just my little hunch. Now, does anybody recognize anything with these points compared to the original points that you did last class period? Yes. Look, he comes in late and he already knows. Yeah, the opposite. I don't really know what you mean, though, by the opposite. Like, maybe what's like another way of saying it? But like, as a, oh, like a reflection. Doesn't it kind of look like the mirrored image? Maybe, maybe it doesn't. Let's connect them. Does now that kind of look like it? Like, it's not perfect exact, but you guys can see how that like is that, that roughly goes into that mirrored image of that, right? And therefore, you could say, well, and this is the reason why I want to do pi, because what was pi? That's another asymptote. So what happens here is, again, the graph has to approach these asymptotes. right? And then it does it over here. What do you think happens at 2 pi? Asymptote. Now, the important distinction, guys, when I taught this graphing, I just used sine to help us graph cosecant. Sine is not a part of cosecant. Okay? So, I'm going to leave it up there so you guys can see the relationship. But I'm just going to dash it because it's actually not a part of the graph. Okay, I just want you guys to see that relationship. But really, this graph is like these little alternating parabola kind of shaped things. 
Now again, let's continue the pattern though. What's going to happen as we expand this? So if I kind of go past 2 pi, where do you think the next little parabola is going to be? Up here or down here? Up top, right? So that means it kind of starts to repeat. Oh, so that means how long does it take the graph to repeat itself? 2 pi. Last class where we talked about sine took 2 pi, which was the period. So that means the period of cosecant looks like that's going to be 2 pi as well, right? Ah, OK. Um, what about as we go in the other direction? Where do you think this one's going to go? Up here or down here? Down. So that means if you're going to have this, it's not symmetrical about the y-axis, but it looks like it's going to be symmetrical about the origin. That means it's odd, just like sine was odd. Symmetrical about the x and the y-axis, right? Um, some other interesting things. You guys can see that this is unbounded, right? It has no maximum or minimum. That means there's no amplitude, right? Because when you're talking to your neighbor, amplitude was the half distance from the max to the min. This doesn't have a max or a min. It does change from decreasing to increasing, and then increasing and decreasing. Um, but it does have a relative min and a relative max. Isn't that kind of interesting? Right? It has a relative min and a relative max. We haven't, done, we haven't actually seen a problem that looked like that before. It has a relative min and a relative max. But no absolute max or no absolute min, because it's unbounded. right? Um, you guys can also see that the domain occurs at every single um, value except for the asymptotes. So let's find where the asymptotes are. There's an asymptote at 0, at pi, at 2 pi. I'm oh, sorry, let, let's try this again. OK, so the asymptotes occur at 0, at pi, at 2 pi, at 3 pi, 4 pi. Five. You guys see the pattern, right? You can go in the positive or negative direction. How can I maybe write that algebraically? The vertical asymptotes occur at x equals how could I represent 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, negative pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi? How could I write that as an algebraic expression equation? Yeah? n pi or pi n, where n represents any integer. n can be 0, n can be 1, n can be negative 5, right? But it's always going to give you one of those intervals. So the um, asymptotes occur at pi n. So the domain, I'm not going to write the domain, but the domain would be all real numbers except for pi n. And then the last one, the one that students usually get confused on, is the range. Because look it, the sine graph had a range from negative 1 to 1 from last class period with no transformations. This has a range of negative infinity to negative 1. Nothing is in here. And then from 1 to infinity. Yes? So n only has to be whole number integers. Huh? n is only whole number integers. Yes, or just integers. So my range is going to look a little weird, but I'll tell you to. So my range is negative infinity. Is negative 1 a part of the graph? Well, I kind of gave it away. But of course it is. What do you mean? It's on the graph right there. What happens at 3 pi halves? What is the 1 over the y coordinate? Is that defined? Is 1 over the y coordinate defined? 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. So negative 1 is part of the range, right? So yes, it is defined. And then nothing happens from here to here. And then we continue from 1 to infinity. So again, it's like that opposite range of the sine graph, right? Sine is from negative 1 to 1. This is from negative infinity to negative 1 and 1 to infinity. Obviously, they share negative 1 and 1. They share those points. But besides that, you can see that kind of opposite mirrored. You can see that mirrored relationship. That's what I'm trying to really get to. It's just that mirrored relationship. You see the mirrored relationship in the graphs. Yes? No? Maybe so? OK. So that's just kind of the basics of cosecant. Um, and then we